Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you and the Word of God and we're so excited about about each and every one of you. Uh, before we, uh, you know what, get started, I want to share with you, uh, we do know that it is, um, it is Women's History Month, that's right, it is, but I think we should celebrate people at all times, you know, no matter the gender, but I'd like to share with you some uh, publications by some awesome women, they are authors. Uh, first of all, Miss Cynthia Gaston, uh, she does have a children's book collection as well as Black History Should Not Be a Mystery. And then we also have another great author, uh, Brittany Tolbert, A Look Through My Eyes. And we have uh, Felicia McCarty, she has several books. Uh, one being in called Don't Stare at Me, Parents Like Me. And let me see, who else do I want to talk about today in this awesome, awesome time? We have Prophetess Yolanda Lee George. She is a author. She's a psalmstress, and she has uh, a Christian counseling ministry as well. Uh, phenomenal women that I know and listen, I have had the opportunity to work with talk with these women so support one another in any capacity that you can do not be afraid to show some love support you know and just encourage one another not just this month but at every opportunity that you can do so so I thank God for the women that I have had the chance to share with work with pray with guess what sometimes cry with and last but not least Janet Pace hear my heart's cry all of the books that I have named are available on Amazon to purchase that's right all of those books check out uh, the series from prophetess Yolanda Lee George you can find a lot of her material on her website at you'll overcome dot com all right so I want to talk about something and you know whenever we talk about anything guess what I am the first partaker and I am a firm believer believer that we cannot talk from teach from share from areas that we have not experienced also if we haven't overcome it another thing to help is if you are in the process of overcoming it and it's good to, to talk about it and to talk with others, you know what I mean? To help you get through some different stages of your life. And, you know, I love vision. I love when I see individuals seeking God for vision and they begin to uh, manifest and unfold, walk in the vision that God has given unto them. Now, I do want to say this along the times and avenues that you are walking and operating in your vision we do and no one is exempt so uh, we can never say oh that's not me because no one is exempt from what I'm about to say we look at and we admire others okay but I do not want us to fall into what is known as the copycat syndrome. The copycat syndrome is where there is lack of authenticity. There is no real vision. Operating in the spirit of jealousy. Not being led by God and the Holy Spirit. No real identity operating out of your league or capacity and no real passion behind your work so there are two scenarios where someone can fall into the copycat syndrome and this is the danger of watching others 
Number one is when we fail to actually seek God for the vision he has for us. We can look at and admire what others do. And then we might say, you know what? I think I like that. I think I'm going to do that without consulting God. And a lot of times when we do that, that's not even our league. That's not even where we're supposed to be. We're just copying what we like because we lack real vision. We lack real passion and we are scared of our own identity. I got to write that down because guess what? That wasn't on my original list. So I'm going to write that down. Scared of our own of our own identity. That's good. So that's in that circumstance when we see something that we like we observe others doing it and they're doing it well to the eye to the appearance to the introduction to uh, the world for others to see we like it we admire it and we figure you know what I like what they do I want to do that I'm gonna do that and we watch them intently to try to figure out to watch their patterns to copy what they do that is copycat syndrome and then in the next instance I'm going to share with you is when we actually have the vision that God has given us but we pay more attention to others who operate in similar visions similar works similar mantles and we try and model our vision after theirs. In both of these instances, there has not been a time to go into the presence of the Lord to find out what are your plans for me? What is your purpose for me? How is it that you would like for me to carry out this vision? How would you like to model and mold me so that I am a good, intricate part of the body of Christ? And so I I definitely wanted to talk about that, that copycat syndrome. Um, It is rooted from a spirit of jealousy. It really is. Uh, But I do not want us, I don't want us to fall into that. I love authentic identity. I like to hear about your vision, about your passion, about what it is that God is calling you to do. And I love to see an individual stand up in what God has given them. What has God given them? you you are uniquely and divinely fashioned you are uniquely divinely created no one can do what you were called to do they may try to emulate it to try and duplicate it but no one is you you are you divinely beautifully made in the image of God I'd like to take it a step further and to tell you this over in Isaiah this is good I love the way the Holy Spirit helps me orchestrate what he wants me to say and so I'd like to go over to Isaiah 55 now Isaiah 55 and 11 says so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I see it so if we were to take that particular passage of scripture spoken in Isaiah 
God spoke you into existence. He knew each and every one of us before we were formed in our mother's womb. He called you forth. There is something specific about you in that call and he knows each and every one of us name by name and so when he calls your name he calls you also with a purpose right and so when he calls you to do a certain thing line that up with isaiah 55 and 11 so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void it but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it so there is no re no reason no rhyme or reason whatsoever to emulate dupli duplicate or copy anyone else because whatsoever God has called you to do the vision he has given you know that it can stand on its own with the help of God with the guidance of the Holy Spirit and it shall accomplish what it was sent to do if we have copycat syndrome we're copying off of somebody else that's not what God told us to do so it is not going to fulfill what God sent it to do do you do you understand where I'm going with this it is okay I'm not telling you not to look at and admire what others do give them their flowers where they are due and while they can receive them applaud each other congratulate each other support one another but don't come and 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 look and 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 attach yourself because you're trying to steal some ideas listen there is no reason for you to go and steal anybody's ideas if we would seek the lord our god about how he wants us to maneuver and go and grow and live and share and be the unique person he has created us to be he's going to give you some great plans so drop that facade that you have to go and spy out the competition and take their ideas no God has some ideas for you God has some stuff for you to do he wants you to do them in a specific way he wants you to do them at a specific time oh that's just so good let me tell you what just hit my spirit so if we if, if we take on the, the, the copycat syndrome and we're all doing the same thing at the same time not because we're being led by God but because we're just copying somebody else then we're not operating in our appointed time so let me write that down not operating in our own appointed time So these are good. I'm going to tell you that on my list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I now have eight. Eight bullet points on the dangers of watching others. Eight key points about the dangers of watching others. So let me read off these eight points again lack of authenticity no real vision operating in the spirit of jealousy not being led by God which is he sends the directions through the Holy Spirit no real identity operating out of your league or your capacity no real passion behind your work scared of your own identity and not operating in your own appointed time 
If you've just tuned in, you've tuned in to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and I thank you for joining us today. Let me share with you our website. If you are an author looking for a publisher, please feel free to visit our website at wtiproductions.org, and you will uh, come upon uh, our services as well as some of our authors publications that we have released and we are also still promoting our latest edition we just published and released the keys of promises it is available on amazon for fifteen dollars or you can email us at the balance of life to find out how you can make a purchase if it's for a group study the book is for study it's for individual study or group study there are sections behind some chapters uh, keys identified and there are reflections which are questions to help us to better understand our comprehension of the keys identified we cover sections in the book of Daniel Ezekiel Proverbs Isaiah I am so excited about this work because that is exactly what it is. Once again, you can purchase your copy of the Keys of Promises via Amazon for $15 plus shipping and handling. Or feel free to email us today at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com if you would like to make a bulk purchase for a group study. And we're still working on a promo to give away a few free copies of the Keys of Promises. I am praying about the time that we're going to do that because I want to have enough copies. Uh, we want to bless... Um, I want to say about five individuals. We want to bless five individuals with a free copy of the Keys of Promises. So we're working on that. We're going to release that time of production uh, for you. So excited about that. Uh, and we'd love to stay connected with each and every one of you. Please feel free to visit us via social media, Facebook, The Balance of Life. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can also catch the television portion of The Balance of Life via Roku and Fire TV. And today, listen, when this dropped in my spirit, to talk about the dangers of watching others, the copycat syndrome, I'm like, ouch, you know, hey, this is personal. This is, this is, this is a place that everyone upon the earth has faced, will face, and guess what? It will lurk its ugly head time and time again. If you are in radio, if you are in podcasting, no matter what you are doing, uh, you, you will definitely look at others who are in that field. And let me tell you something, you will look at their numbers, you will compare your numbers to their numbers. You will. But it, and when that happens, cast down that thought, cast down that imagination, because here is what will hit your head. It will hit your head, it will hit your mind, and it will hit your heart, it will hit your ego, but you have to stop it before it hits your actions. You have to stop it. Know that you are uh, uniquely and divinely created. And as long as you have a clear understanding that you are working and moving and doing as orchestrated by God. That is their lane. Stay in yours. Stay in your lane. Do according to the will of God. That's, that's, that's theirs. You have nothing to do with anybody else's work. Don't be so judgmental. Don't allow those things to attract you to try and do as they do. Also, do not try to shift the way you're doing things thinking you're going to get the results that they got. Continue to do as you are created to do. Continue to seek the Lord your God. 
asking him every single day holy spirit what are we doing today in the capacity of what he has called you to do in your career if you are an employee listen you know the bottom line of what you're supposed to get to god how do you want me to work give me some structure give me some order show me how to do this according to your will so that i can give the results that my employers are looking for if you are the business owner same principle what is your bottom line uh what is it what are the goals that you are sent to reach whatever we are doing and we are connected to god it has a ultimate purpose it has an ultimate goal how are you working to reach that ultimate goal when it comes to ministry of the body of christ we are supposed to have the same goal now we're not going to all operate the same way we don't function the same way Mm -mm. there should be something uh, of familiarity that we do worshiping god in spirit and in truth rightly dividing the word of truth grieving not the holy spirit our faith in god that he is and that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life we have some common core things but we're not going to worship the same it should be a, a recognition of the anointing and the Holy Spirit there. That's absolutely right. But we all have different functions. Yet one common goal. So I want to share with you today. Do not fall and to the dangers of looking at others and picking up that copycat syndrome because that is not authentic we can't look at another person and say "Ooh, i'm gonna do that because guess what the results will not be the same it is not what god wants you to do and here's another thing we're looking at the finished product we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. We don't know the cost of the oil. We don't know the time in the lab it takes to prepare to present it to you so beautifully and unblemished. We have no idea if it's some pins holding up uh, uh, one sleeve. We don't know all of that. We don't know if it's glue on the bottom of the shoe. All we know is those shoes look cute and I want them. And I want to walk in them just like he or she does. In this hour, in this hour, God is looking for the true church. He's not looking for a copycat. He's looking for someone who is obedient to his voice, who will follow his command, not someone's actions. And so if you, if you, and like I said, we've all fallen short to this. No one is exempt. But the minute that thought comes, don't entertain it. Cast it down. Cast it down with the word of God. And where do we cast it down that? We cast it down in scripture. We have a great example of how to do that over in scripture texts. Over in 2 Corinthians, you know, this is my, one of my favorite areas of scripture that I like to share very often. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and I'm going to start at the third verse. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So, the copycat syndrome is a stronghold. It is. It is a stronghold that you have to cast down. 
this is a stronghold if you're just tuning in you're tuning in to the balance of life and i thank you so very much for joining us today this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it don't forget on fridays at 10 o'clock a.m you can tune in to is there a word from the lord with apostle Naaman Wilson Jr. and Pastor Valerie Wilson of Charity Lighthouse of Faith. They are based in Florida, but you can tune in every Friday morning, 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. for their podcast, Is There a Word from the Lord? And also coming up, I want to make sure I keep this in our announcements, May 12th. 13th and 14th in Swainsboro, Georgia, Apostle Wilson and Pastor Pastor Wilson will be in revival, a three-night revival in Swainsboro, Georgia, May 12th, 13th, and 14th. They will be in a three-night revival, and we are looking to uh, make sure that we record. Yes, I will be there. so to make sure that we can record get some video get some audio to share with the listening audience for that revival is there a word from the lord so excited about that if you have any events coming up that you would like for us to share here with the balance of life please feel free to email us at the balance of life one at yahoo.com and we will review and share your event and if any of you missed our broadcast from thursday we had a uh, guest dr jacqueline uh, on with us to talk about uh, some great great um, free things going on in Tampa as well as in government so uh, you can go back and, and tune in you can listen to that via our YouTube channel uh, it was entitled information you could use and we also still have the poster up on our social media page for Facebook just go over to the balance of life's Facebook page on uh, Thursday this past Thursday and you can check that flyer out and get you some information all right so today we're talking about the dangers of watching others the cop- the copycat syndrome which we have identified the copycat syndrome as a stronghold it is definitely a stronghold Uh, And and we have to cast it down using the word of God. Do not entertain the the notion, the thought of, first of all, comparing yourself to others and then trying to emulate what they're doing, thinking that you're going to get the same results that they got. It doesn't work that way. Because we don't know clearly of their vision first of all second of all we don't even know their connection with God we we don't know all of those things and that's what it means when it says you don't know what goes on behind the scenes you don't know the cost Uh, you don't know all of that and so to look at something uh, from just the outlook and say "Ooh." I'm going to do what they do. You know, you literally have some people who listen uh, to different things and watch people intently to pick up on on certain things of how they carry themselves, how they maneuver, how they operate with the thought that they're going to get the same results. That is a copycat syndrome. That is dangerous. And, and so... As I was thinking about that, I wanted to share another area of scripture. So we share with you two scriptures already. Isaiah 55, 11. So place yourself there. We also share with you 2 Corinthians 10. And we read the third through the fifth verse. Amen. Now, another area of scripture where an individual thought that they could buy the anointing. You can't buy the anointing. We're using this example simply because 
when the copycat syndrome is at work and a person is studying you they will go out and purchase things that they see another individual utilize they watch them they study them intently so they might start purchasing the same kind of clothing that they wear uh, thinking that that's what got them the results that they got uh, they'll change their hair their makeup they'll uh, even pay attention to the the type of equipment uh, so it goes beyond paying attention to the verbiage that is used and how it's used all of these things someone I hear the Holy Spirit say, somebody is watching you that intently. Someone is paying that much attention to you. How you talk, how you post, how you do this, how you do that. That is a copycat syndrome. And we want to break that stronghold in the name of Jesus. If you have found yourself in that place, you can be delivered and set free. If someone is watching you that intently, we can bind that spirit, bind that that stronghold, casting it down, pulling it down in the name of Jesus. I pray, I really, really pray for individuals to walk in their own anointing, in their own calling. You are uniquely and designedly blessed. And I pray against those individuals that try to come in and steal what God has given you. He gave that to you. And just like he gave you a vision, he can give others a vision as well. He does it every single day. He has no respect of person. So let's take a look at another example. Over in the book of Acts in the 8th chapter and I'm going to read first Acts 8 9 through 13 and then I'm going to go over to 18 through 25 starting at the ninth verse it says but there was a certain man called Simon which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of God he had a form of godliness but denying the power thereof he tricked people here's something else that I can I, I, that I see in this particular scripture text in order for him to act this way it means that he watched someone he watched others who knows he probably saw someone he probably visited someone in another town other disciples and stuff that came through he probably stood back or far back and he really studied them and then he went home in his own city and he did what he saw abroad and he fooled a lot of people they thought he was some great power of God because he did what he saw he wasn't led by God he had the copycat syndrome verse 11 says and to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries so he did this for a very long time that's that copycat syndrome this is dangerous very dangerous don't get caught up in copying others. God can operate through you with the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no reason for any of us to emulate, be jealous of, and copy anybody else. None whatsoever be you be the great you there are certain things about you listen I don't care how they try to 
dupli duplicate and emulate and try and stage. They just can't do it because you are you. You are you. And you're good at being you. So let's look further. Now let's go over to the 18th verse. So we have established that this individual, he watched others. He watched others who walked in the power and the anointing. And he emulated, he did certain things as they did. He probably learned how to talk as they did, you know, raise and lower his voice and, and walk and dress. And he looked the whole part. But it was not authentic. So over in verse 18, it says, And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. So, as he has watched others, he only watched the natural abilities that they had. He could not comprehend because at this time, the Holy Spirit had not yet been given. So he didn't have an opportunity previously to try to emulate that. But now he's seeing something new. Now the Holy Ghost is coming upon the scene. So let's look at that because I want to verify that with you in Scripture. If we back up and we're in Acts the 8th chapter. And I want to go at the 14th verse starting there it says now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard, heard that Samaria had received the word of God they sent unto them Peter and John so they had received the word only verse 15 says who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost verse 16 says for as yet he was fallen upon none of them only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus then laid they hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost so up until this point the sorcerer Simon he could only copy what he saw of those who gave the word and how they carried themselves how they handled themselves how they delivered the word that's a copycat spirit the Holy Spirit cannot be duplicated it cannot be copied many may try but they will fail I like to call it a smoke screen because when you're trying to copy someone you just can't keep up especially when the Holy Spirit uh, instructs them to, to move and to change and to do things you can't keep up imagine you think that you are following someone and 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 you think that you have their pattern down packed and when you look up they've shifted and you're trying to scramble to keep up with the shift oh God I know oftentimes we pray and we know when there is a shift but if you're not dealing with authentic worship if you are not really following after what God is saying for you to do you can't keep up with another person's shift mm -mm. no you can't keep up with the shift isn't that what happened over with the king when they were at war and God instructed the prophet to tell the king to shift and the king said which one of you is for the king of Israel and they said nay my lord but they have listen they got something we don't have they got the prophet over there <laughs> 
they got the prophet over there and the prophet is in tune with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is telling them to shift and guess what when the Holy Spirit tells you to shift when the Holy Spirit tells you to move you can't keep up with that kind of shift and just when it seems like you have gotten something else that they do and you start doing that God will shift them again and he'll shift them again and he'll shift them again so here Simon the sorcerer verse 18 says and when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles hands the Holy Ghost was given he offered them money because guess what this is something he just could not do how can you possibly do that I've seen the demonstration of others and he emulated it so well on how he gave the Word of God and he made him to himself to be such this such great man of God he can deliver the Word of God with such power and it seemed that he had authority behind his words he even practice how to say certain things in sincerity listen he had it all down packed he knew how to show sympathy he knew how to hug a person at the right time he knew all of these copycat things he knew all the copycat motives but one thing he could not copy one thing he just could not understand is the power the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit because quickly the Holy Spirit comes in oh like a, like a mighty rushing wind quickly the Holy Spirit comes in so you know what uh, oh God sometimes it's it's in that hug and quickly the Holy Spirit will come in and and it's just like that it, it's, it's like a quick fire it is it is a mighty rushing wind it is quickly that it comes in and you don't know which way he's coming in that's one thing about the wind you don't know which way the wind is coming in the wind comes in and you don't know which way it's coming from but it comes oh and it comes in and it blows and he could not grasp that but so he thought he could pay for it so what else did he pay for did he pay for somebody else to teach him how to act like he was some great power did he teach did he get somebody to teach him how to do that he couldn't teach he couldn't he couldn't get anybody to teach him how to emulate and be in the holy spirit so it says saying give me also this power that on whomsoever i lay hands he may receive the holy ghost but Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive, perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness, and in the bond of iniquity then answered simon and said pray ye to the lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me and when and they when they had testified and preached the word of the lord turned to jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the samaritans the things of the holy spirit when the vision is true and it is coming from god protected at all costs that brings me back to the word we shared a couple of weeks ago. Watch for the setup. Pay attention to who's paying attention to you. Why are you paying so much close attention to me? I know that God has a purpose and a plan for you. And I want you to live according to the will of God. I know that there is vision in you. There is purpose in you. And listen, you don't have to go and copy anybody's anything. Ask God to give you what is uniquely for you. How he wants you to move and operate. 
let the will of God be done in your life listen we're about to come to a close and I want to invite you to come and be with us on tomorrow at 12 30 to 1 o'clock p.m. right here on the balance of life let's wait and see what God is going to share with us have a blessed day everyone